Hello, in this lecture we'll take a look at a problem that will be very similar to a homework and or assignment. The numbers will change, the format will remain much the same. So this will be the work that we will be working. We will be plugging into an Excel worksheet like this. And we do that in order to learn Excel because this is really where you want to pick up the Excel skills within the accounting courses and then uh, hone them down and learn some tips and tricks in the Excel classes. And the Excel will help you to use formulas and give you a broader sense of the big picture uh, when we use Excel. So this will be the worksheet. Let's take a look at the problem. So a machine costs 257.5 with a four year life and estimated 20,000 salvage value uh, is installed in Luther Company's account factory January 1st. The factory manager estimates the machine will produce 475,000 units of product during its life. It actually produces the following. This is 220 for year one and so on and so forth for the years. That will only be applicable depending on the type of method that we will use. The total number of units produced by the end of year four exceed the original estimate. This difference was not predicted. Um, the machine was not, must not be depreciated below its estimated salvage value. So we're gonna be working on calculating depreciation. We're gonna look at the depreciation in three different methods of depreciation, straight line, double declining, and uh, units of production. And that, so some of the data that we have here, such as the units of production, will not be relevant unless we are calculating in accordance with that form of depreciation method. We'll start off with the uh, most basic method being the straight line method. So if, if we were to just try to ask ourselves, how should we allocate the cost of something, we would probably first think, well, let's try the straight line method. Let's just divide it out and apply the same cost over its useful life. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So in this worksheet, what we'll do is I'll put the calculation over here and then we're going, I'm going to put the calculation again in terms of what is the expense, what and how do we calculate the book value here. And then I want to put it into context and look at the actual journal entries and what would happen to the trial balance. So now we're drilling down on specific accounts and a lot of times when we drill down on specific things, we lose the context of the bigger picture and that can kind of give us a disconnect on what we're doing. So we're going to do the calculation. We're going to record uh, the, the different types of numbers that could be asked for based on that calculation. Then we'll take a look at the journal entry and the trial balance in context of the larger picture and see where this really fits in. So we're going to start with the straight line calculation. We have the cost. And per the problem, the cost was 257.5. Then we're going to subtract. I'm going to put a subtract sign here. The salvage value. Now, the salvage value represents the amount that we think the machine will be worth as of the end of the useful life. So we're not going to use it anymore in production, but maybe we can sell it or something for scrap for whatever the salvage is. I'm going to put the salvage in here personally with a uh, positive number and represent that it's a subtraction problem with the subtract number here. Connect may ask for a negative number there, so be aware of that and use the check features in Connect um, to help you with that. So then the amount to be depreciated so now I'm going to subtract that out and of course if we did it in a calculator we would just be taking the 257.5 minus the 20 would be here we're going to use formulas so I'm going to put my cursor in cells B7 B7 equals I'm going to hit the up arrow twice to be to cell B5 so whatever's in B5 which is of course the 257.5 minus we're going to click the up arrow one time to B6. So I want B5 minus B6. And that will give us the same calculation, 237.5. Then we're going to divide. So I'm going to put a dash divide by the number of years. And in this problem, the problem said that we have a useful life of four years. So we're going to say four years is its useful life. And that will give us the depreciation per year. So once again, now I'm in cell B9, and we're going to do this with a formula, so we're going to hit equals first, and then I'm going to hit the up arrow two times, so that 237.5. Then we're going to hit the divide button, which is the forward slash on the computer, and then we're going to hit the up arrow one time. So 237.5 divided by 4 would give us 59,375 um, per year. So the depreciation per year will be that uh, 59,375. So if we look at that in context, then, I'm going to move that over here and we're going to say, okay, well, we, what will be the depreciation for each year will be the same. So I'm just going to say this equals year one, that number. 
and we can just pull that across. I can say that's the same here, that's the same here, and the same here. It's always the same because it's straight line. What does that do to the book value calculation? The book value calculation is the cost, and the cost is always the same. We bought it for 257.5. I'm just going to bring that across. Same number, same number, same number. And then we're going to subtract out the accumulated depreciation. Now, accumulated depreciation is the total depreciation over time. So in year one, the, depreci the accumulated depreciation is the same as the depreciation expense. In year two, the accumulated depreciation will go up. So in year two, it's going to be the prior year's uh, accumulated depreciation plus the current depreciation for the current year. So it's going to be in a straight line method, the depreciation uh, amount times two. In year three, once again, it's going to be the prior year equals the prior year in F8 in this case, plus the current year in uh, G5, enter. And then in year four, we're going to say this equals the prior year in uh, uh, G8 plus the current year in H5. And there we have it. And that will give us the book value that we're looking for, book value, which equals the cost minus the amount that we have depreciated. And that goes all the way across. Of course, the book value goes down equals the cost minus the amount we've depreciated equals the cost minus the amount we've depreciated equals the cost minus the amount we've depreciated. So now let's take a look at that in terms of a journal entry just to see what would happen from year to year. So I'm just going to try to give us three years of a trial balance here and let's post these transactions and see what happens to our, our years. So in year one, the only transaction that we're going to do is this, it's the same for each year will be debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. If we look at what we have on here now, we have equipment on the books as an asset. And then we're looking at the green accounts. And we remember if we just look at year one, right now we have 100000 of income, which is income as a credit minus expenses. We don't have any. And so let's see what will the, be the effect on income, net income, and assets, liabilities, owner's equity. So we're going to say that this amount equals the depreciation, which is this here for the first year. We're going to debit that, and we're going to credit it. So if I post that out, now we had it post automatically. So if we take a look at where that went, it's going, it's going here. And it's going here. So now depreciation expense went up, brings net income down. Accumulated depreciation went up in the credit direction because it's a contra asset account. So what really happened here is that the accumulated depreciation is kind of like the, the credit side of the asset account. Rather than us writing down this number directly, we're going to pay, we're going to put the credit side to another account called accumulated depreciation. So if we take the debit minus the credit, it would be the book value 198, 125, 198, 125. So in this way, we're telling our readers multiple things. We're saying, hey, reader, this is what we bought it for. This is the estimate that we had to make it go down for its entire useful life. This is the amount that we expensed in this time period. So then let's take a look at year two. We'll do the same thing in year two and post this journal entry. It'll post automatically. Once we do this, I'm going to say this equals the year two depreciation, which is right there. Turn these off, and we're going to have a credit of the same amount. So in year two, then, we can see that this is going here, and this is going here. Same thing. What happened to the, the prior year depreciation expense? Well, it now rolled into the owner's equity. So the owner's equity now uh, closed out the prior year's depreciation expense, we're going to show income again of the 100000 before the, this journal entry. And then once we post the journal entry, we're back down to the same amount. If we had the same amount of income, this would bring us down the same amount, an even amount per year because we're applying the amount over evenly. And then the accumulated depreciation went up. It went up from the, the 59 uh, to the 118 That makes the book value go down. So the book value is now the 138750 which uh, is the 138,750 here. So again, if we just keep doing this through the whole use, uh, whole life of this uh, machine, then year three, 
we have this and this again same thing happens this uh, account has now going up accumulated depreciation it's going up which brings the book value down this minus this is 79 375 79 375 then if we take a look at the expense 59 375 is reported once again here the last 59 375 has closed out therefore we are, we're only left with the current years 59 375 on the income statement whereas on the balance sheet we are accumulating the depreciation that's why this goes up in a cumulative fashion this stays the same because we're depreciation we're depreciating the same amount and then closing it out to capital at the end so then we'll do the last year once again and so we have this and here and then same same activity happens the 100,000 minus the 59 is still the 40 so again if we had an even income of 100,000 each year then our net income would be brought down by the same amount each time under the straight line method and if we take a look up here we have now 157 minus the 137 is 20,000 why do we have 20,000 left at the end because that's our salvage value that's what we think we'll be able to sell it for at the end of that time period so now let's do the same type of analysis and move on to the double declining method once again a company would not do the two methods at the same time they would choose one method to do and uh, pick and uh, be consistent with that method so the double declining method is a bit more complicated but it's very commonly used in practice so it's something that really can get our handle on so if we take a look at the calculation again and we go over to the double declining method we're going to start off in the same place we're going to start off with the cost and the cost in this case is going to be the same 257.5 cost of the machinery and then we're going to divide by the number of years and the number of years is four so that will give us the uh, straight line depreciation if we had no salvage so we're going to start off with the straight line depreciation and then basically we're going to double the rate on that and then I'll, once i do this calculation i'll give you a shortcut way to do the calculation but I want you to understand where this double declining rate is coming from then we'll give you the shortcut so then i'm going to put my cursor in b22 b22 and we're going to say equals i'm going to hit the up arrow twice to get to cell b20 divided which is the forward slash on the computer by and I'm going to hit the up arrow once and the four. So 257.5 divided by four is the 64.375. Once again, that would be the straight line rate if we did not take the salvage value out. For example, if we go back up to our calculation, remember we took the salvage value out, then divided by four. This would be the straight line rate if we were not taking into account the salvage. So keep that in mind. Then we're going to divide by... the original cost. And what I'm trying to get here is the rate of depreciation. So I'm going to divide. I'm going to just take that original cost again, put that down here, and we will divide that out. And that will give us the straight line rate if there was no salvage. So I'm going to hit equals and then up to the 64,375 divided by the 257,500. And that will give us our rate of 25. Now note that this cell came out to 25% and that's because of the formatting of the cell and it's something you really want to be aware of. So just in, for example, if I did that same calculation over here and we took the 64,375 divided by the 257,500, it would come up to zero and we'd go, well, why did it come up to zero? And what I think it should be 25. Well, you'll note that there's no decimals and there's no percentage here. So if we want to see that then, and if we can go to the home tab, we can go to the numbers group we can add decimals this way so increase decimals there's the 25 there's no more zeros after that so there's that and then if i want to make it a percent remember i'd move it two places to the left and enter a percent sign in excel i just hit the percent button and that does it for me so 25 percent is the same as 0.25 okay so let's go back over here now we're going to double that, of course, because I'm going to multiply times 2 to double it. Because we're on a double declining rate, and that will give us our, our double declining rate. So we're going to take, of course, the 25% times 2, and that will give us our 50% double declining rate. So let's just take a look at that and see what we're talking about 
if we take the 25%, that's the rate that we could get to get to our straight line depreciation of the 64. So remember that 64 is the 257.5 divided by 4 to get to that 64. We could do that with a rate as well. We could say, well, it's the 257.5 times 0.25. So we're depreciation, depreciating at a rate of 25% because